Hey everyone, this is Matt from Slam Sector, and you're in the pipe with 5x5, Five Five, the podcast where we explore things that make war, Wargaming and Warhammer so special. Today we're going to be talking about what I like to call balling on a budget. And by that what I mean is uh, making your dollar stretch for the most value when getting into Warhammer. Because it can be a pretty intense uh, monetary journey if... Um, if you fall into some of the pitfalls and, uh, and, uh, I'll call them psychological traps that, uh, we kind of plant for ourselves with this. Uh, but before we, be, be, excuse me, but before we get going, uh, make sure to like this episode. And if you're not subscribed, it's a great way to help us out and support the show. Also, make sure to check us out on socials and join the discussion with us in Discord, all of which are linked below. Uh, here to chat with me today is a very, good friend of mine, Kaya, or should I say Norn Queen Kaya. <laughs> uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. I am Kaya, also known as Norn Queen Kaya. Uh, you may have seen some of my bad takes on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, super excited to discuss some things about Warhammer and budgeting and all that stuff. I'm, I have a lot of knowledge on that. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, welcome to the show. Um, yeah, we were going over some stuff a little bit earlier, and I think we're like definitely in, in, in the same wavelength here. Um, I guess one of the first things that I really wanted th that came to mind when I was thinking about like balling on a budget um, is kit bashing, right? So uh, the 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 thing that comes to mind is you walk into the Warhammer store, you see boxes with infantry you see the tank box and everything and then you see like a little a little blister pack that has a the tiniest sprue you've ever seen in your life one of them and it costs like 40 bucks and it is the space marine captain that you want you know what i mean yeah yeah and and it's like okay so you're telling me that i could either buy this one miniature or i could add 20 bucks to this and for full price buy 10 intercessors you know what i mean yeah uh it's just the the value proposition of like 60 bucks for 10 which is already a little eye watering or 40 bucks for one miniature is just like oh my god it's rough um so what i like to do unless i'm just absolutely in love with a sculpt or just like head over heels for 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 something like that uh what i'll do is i'll for example, buy a 10 pack of intercessors. I'll set aside like three of them and I'll dive into my bits bin where I've got like spare parts from other kits or anything like that. And I'll, um, kind of glorify and add on the really snazzy bits to that space marine captain, for example. Um, is that, is that something that you've experienced kind of in the, in the Warhammer world? Yeah. So, I mean, my experience with kit bashing, so one of my main armies is actually Tyranids, um, hence the Nord Queen. Um, one of the big things that I do with kit bashing, and I might be jumping subjects here, but um, there's actually a kit um, with Tyranids. They're the Hive Tyrants. Essentially, they mm. have every part you need to make two models. The only part that they only have one of is the torso. So I have a 3D printer, um, and you can also get this part um, 3D printed from a third party if you if you don't have a printer. And I think I've seen it for five or ten bucks. Um, you can actually 3D print the torso and get two models out of one kit. Um, so I've done. Yeah. I've actually bought the kit twice and gotten three hive tyrants and a swarm lord from it. <laughs> That's freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, I've done that. So I think I think the the demon prince kit has since the old demon prince kit kit has since been phased out. But the uh, the demon prince kit before um, that that was existing up until like as we're recording, which is January twenty twenty three. Um, it had pretty much the 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 hive tyrant situation going on, where you had two of each option except for the legs and the uh, torso back. The torso front was different. All this other stuff, mm -hmm. and um, I was actually <laughs> this is before I bought a three D printer. I was so uh, uh, just like mad at the kid. Like it was it was it was anger that that, that fueled me in this. Oh God. Um, I, <laughs> I, I made a blue stuff mold and I milliput mold copied uh, 
all the stuff to to then use the rest of the kit and, and everything you know it's, it's oh my god it's amazing that is so much yeah. work <laughs> It is. It was an obscene amount of work, but I was like, "Oh, you're gonna charge me thirty nine dollars for one day? I'm gonna go." You know, and I was just like, oh, man. I just went so deep on it. It was kind of ridiculous. I love both of those demon princes. Um, the one that is a copy mm-hmm. looks a little gnarly, but he's a Nurgle demon prince, so it's fine. You know, like they're they're supposed to look all scraggly and jacked up anyway, so you know what? <laughs> it's not a problem. At all. You know, another thing that with kit bashing too is with tanks. Um, if you want different types of tanks, um, you can also uh, magnetize the weapons, and you can do that with Tau. You can do that with anything that has interchangeable weapons. You know, and you can mag- oh, yeah. like. With my Tyranids, I've magnetized, um, oh, what was it? Um, I'm trying to think. It was uh, the head of a um, Exocrine. I, I magnetized the head of the Exocrine so that I can interchange okay. it with, um, you know, the, the um, I believe it's the Harfex. Um, but yeah, so, you, you know, you can magnetize certain parts like the Scything Talons or the Crushing Claws, things like that. Um yeah. And yeah, that's another way if you're on a budget and you don't want to buy an extra part or if you don't have a 3D printer, you can just, you know, pay just a little extra for some magnets and some, you know, you already have your super glue and you just, you know, you can do a hand drill or, you know, any kind of little hand drill and just magnetize. Yeah, yeah. There are a ton of hobby guides out there to um, basically buy a drill the same diameter as your magnet and like... You know, you back out a hole and then you have different polaring pairs, polarizing pairs there. And the magnets get teeny tiny and so do the drills. I um, actually do a thing right now with some of my horse heresy models where um, the rhinos and the uh, I think I think you can do this with the predators, too. I might I might be mistaken, but um, they've got like the the back door thing that opens up and it's just a cavity in there. Right. And so my magnetized options go into that back door opening cavity so that I don't lose the <laughs> the bits with with the tank. Now, it makes it sound like a, a child's rattle <laughs> when I'm picking it up and moving it around. But, um, you know, being able to just pop that hatch out and be like, mm, today I'm feeling like uh, multi-melters, you know, the man like to what is whistle. They, they kind That's of pretty so, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's, it's really fun. And I think... My my mantra is like I'll magnetize vehicles mm-hmm. at the drop of a hat. Um, if it's the size of a Terminator or something the Terminator equivalent, I start to hesitate on magnetizing. Yeah. Um, life is too short to magnetize each special weapon guardsman. Oh you know? no! Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I you know <laughs> but, I think it's you know. but it's a good option for larger models, especially the larger models that are more expensive, right? Because you yeah. can you can buy you know primaris marines and whatnot and and you can buy those in bulk but with some of the larger models like exocrines i think are 60 dollars uh for one model um it's you know it's easier yeah. to just magnetize um that way you can interchange it and you don't have to spend another 60 dollars for a single model exactly dreadnought weapons are a big one too mm-hmm. Um, all that fun stuff. And, and these, these kits, when you put them together, um, make sure that you're using all the parts of the kit, not necessarily on the kit, but set aside all the extra bits that you didn't go into, right? Um, having like a big library of bits to, to burn through when you're first getting started is just, so much fun it is it is just the most fun like i have mine organized out by like left hands holding weapons and right hands holding weapons and like you know different heads and so when you get to into that kit bashing you can really just make truly your own right space marine captain or whatever the hell you know um yeah and if you know if, I, if you accumulate yeah. enough bits too um i um i knew somebody who actually from scratch a hundred percent from bits made a full dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's beautiful. It was beautiful. Oh and it was God. fully customizable and everything, and it was made entirely out of bits. Like they got a whole dreadnought just from bits. Oh, that's that's just beyond bonkers. Yeah. Um, you know that starts to get into the territory of my next topic, which 
uh, is instead of kit bashing is just like straight up proxying, right? And by proxying, what I mean is you set down a model that uh, was intended by whoever designed it to be one thing, but for the game or for your army, you are calling it this other thing, right? Now, there are, in my opinion, bad ways to, to proxy, which is you take a Diet Coke can and you put it on the table and you say, ah, oh, yes, this is a Leviathan Dreadnought, right? Oh, like that's... yeah. I mean, you know what? If it's a beer and pretzels game, that's fine. Just maybe the dreadnought is dead when it runs out of beer. That'd be a fun take on it, you know? But yeah. um, if you start getting to get into like tournaments or something, then you kind of want to have some love and care with your proxies. Right. Um, but, you know, like generally the proxying kind of, I feel like it kind of gets a bad rap, you know? Like it's not, it's not as, um, like game breaking as, um, some people lead on it, it it's going to change from play group to play group but uh really at the end of the day whatever you and your opponent see in the mind's eye of what your little dudes are carrying is gonna carry forth in that game so right and um, that's that's yeah. very true um i don't think there is any i don't have a problem with proxying especially if it's just a casual game um, when you get into tournaments it turns into a gray area because it it depends on what you're proxying, how you're proxying it, you know, what what type of tournament. If it's like a big national tournament where there's a ton of money on the line, then, hmm, you know, maybe not so much <laughs> proxy because, you know, you could be proxying like your make or break model that could win you the game. But for smaller tournaments, I don't think there's a problem with it. Um, I, I have a few proxy models myself and, um, you know, they nobody really makes a big deal out of it. Yeah, so what are, uh, describe those proxy models. How did you come about, um, proxying, the, the, those models that are proxies? Well, some of them, like, uh, like the Dreadnought that's completely made out of, um, you know, bits. I have some models, um, I have some models like that that are just made completely out of bits that are proxy. Um, I mm -hmm. also do have some recasts that I've gotten, um, for very cheap, um, that I, you know, I, I just have them, like my, um, my Dima Kieran, um, one of my, that one's a, an entirely proxy printed model. Um, oh, nice. yeah. And you wouldn't be able to tell it looks just like the forge world model, but you know, I do let people know it's a proxy. Hey, that's, that's totally fair. Um, I, and you know, like, I think I've actually seen that model on the table and if you didn't explicitly tell me, I'd be like, yeah, you spent hella triple <laughs> digits on, <laughs> On that sucker. Oh yeah. Uh, it looks exactly. Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, yeah, some proxies that I feel like I th that I've done that I feel like are in you know definitely good faith are um, stuff by War Game Atlantic. Have you seen any of their like kits that they've got that are like almost forty k pretty much? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen some of their stuff. Yeah, so I mean, especially if you're doing something like guardsmen, they've got some cultist stuff in there too, in like the form of like lizard men with gas masks and AK forty sevens. They've got like space guardsmen of all sorts of varieties, like that are like prisoner warriors and like space British and uh, space French. It's 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 wild. Yeah. I, I I love that kind of stuff. So, um, and then you've also I think I've never done it myself, but I've seen people running um alternate history historicals tanks that are at a weird scale or something that are like bumped up on the scale and it looks like a sign a, a, a lehman russ just a chibi like tiger tank lehman russ type thing you know what i mean it's oh, it's it's so, it's so wild oh that kind of yeah. reminds me of the grot tanks from forge world <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I have seen it's... like a really good. So sometimes, like I've seen some really good proxies on Etsy. Now sometimes because mm -hmm. they're kind of boutiquey, sometimes they can be expensive. But like I saw a Chaos Knight. It was a fully customized Chaos Knight that I think it was from a resin printer that they made it from. That mm -hmm. thing looked cooler than the GW model. It had so many spikes <laughs> and bits and skulls and just, just like really, truly, just chaotic looking. And I think it was only fifty dollars. Oh, that's incredible! Yeah, yeah, no, and I mean these night kits being uh, like a hundred and sixty yeah. bucks or whatever they are, are, just like obscene. It's uh, it's really cool. The um, and the the thing about these proxies too is if. You, if, if like, you know, you, you take like five foot step away from it and you look at it, you're like, mm, that kind of doesn't look like a Warhammer model. 
you, you can just like put more bits on it, right? Yeah. You go into that bits bin and you're like, okay, there's a rifle of a, of a guardsman laying across the top where like he jumped into the chassis really quick and had to leave his las gun up there or something or like an aquila or sandbags or wh- whatever, whatever right, you can do yeah. to kind of just blend it in, you know? And some stores, I've seen it a lot lately. Some stores actually do sell bit. Uh, they have bit spins and they do sell them, you know, like a couple of dollars and you get a bag of bits and you can rifle through it and find the bits that might suit whatever you're trying to do with, with whatever project you have in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, the kit bashing, uh, technique of balling on a budget and the proxying technique of balling on a budget, I feel like go hand in hand, you know, you can really synergize those two um kind of philosophies to make some a uh, cheaper than it would cost out of the blister and b truly your own models it just it it, it allows you so much creative freedom right and you know sometimes like it probably looks even better than the original model and let's face it this is a hobby game so you know a lot of it is yes we play the game but a lot of it for some people is the hobby side of it we're putting it together we're painting it why not put your own customized flair especially if it's going to save you some money in the long run absolutely absolutely and i mean uh kind of to to blend these two topics together the final frontier of kit bashing slash proxying is 3d printing like you were talking about earlier right yes uh, <laughs> My, um, I, I do both types of 3D printing. There's, uh, the, the traditional one that's got like the scan lines in it that's like a little nozzle spitting out goop. That is called FDM printing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an Ender 3 where I do that. And then I've also got the resin printing, which is just like, man, that stuff is next level. Um, I have, a an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. They've come out since with a newer version. I think the Mars 3. Mm-hmm. And that one's like even fancier, but, I mean, just, you know, you let that thing go overnight and you wake up eight hours later and you've got a 10 pack of blood angels just upside down, ready to <laughs> stomp oh around. It's gosh. beautiful. Is that what you, I, love, I absolutely is love that it. what you use to make the, the bolt, the bolt bullet dice? Yes. Yes. So, uh, when I first got into it, I was like, well, I got to test it and I got to d- dial in these settings. So, um, yeah, I printed, I 3d resin printed, um, uh a, a a cylinder that has six sides and it looks like a bullet casing right and that's like the per- the perfect thing for 40k to to actually roll a bolter around to generate a d6 result and i made i printed like i don't know like 18 or 19 of them trying to dial in my settings just exactly right and then i had a bunch of really good looking ones that were like 1 degree off from perfect and i was like you know what I think my friends would love these. I'm not going to just hoard off the whole of bullets, you know? So, uh, I gave one to, uh, to you and, uh, and Brandon and, uh, a few other really good buddies of mine. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we use them all the time. I use them sometimes to count my command points. I, I, yeah. I love them. They're incredible looking. Well, hell yeah. I'm glad that's getting use. Uh, I, uh, it, it made me very happy giving those to y'all. <laughs> yeah. They actually got a lot of compliments, um, when I did the Warzone Atlanta tournament. Um, you were there. Oh, sweet. Okay. You know, but yeah, yeah I got yeah. a lot of compliments on them. Oh, nice. That, that warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very cool. So, um, another, arena of saving money that um that people may not quite realize is um secondhand purchases right uh and by secondhand purchases i mean like trading buying selling um the common venues for that are going to be ebay swap meets um and then like discord channels or facebook channels where people are like saying like hey i got this or this collection or this army i'm looking to trade it into whatever they're looking for or just put a dollar value on it, right? Do you have a lot of experience um, doing those? Yeah, I do actually. Um, You know, I haven't actually bought in bulk, um, but I have seen in Discord and Facebook groups, some people be like, hey, I've got 4,000 points of Tyranids. Um, I'm selling it for $200, you know, stuff like that. Um, I do have a lot of experience with swap meets. so I've gotten a lot of really great deals from local swap meets and it's really good like to meet somebody face to face because you can 
you know, kind of like haggle with them a little bit and you're face to face. So it's kind of like a bartering system, if you will. But like I've gotten four guard tanks for $60 total, like that would be $15 each. I've gotten terrain, um, like two Punisher batteries and one Firestorm uh, Redoubt for $90, oh, wow. all bundled together. <laughs> I think my best deal was the Fortress of Redemption. I got that for 120 a fully intact Fortress of Redemption. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah, and then I've also gotten <laughs> Chaos stuff, like Demon. I've gotten the Demon Prince for $20, uh, Soul Grinder for 40 and Chaos Lord for 20 But the But the best deal about that was they were fully painted, and they were, like, so beautifully painted. I, they looked incredible, and especially for the deal that I got for them. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that that's that's absolutely stunning. I um this is this is an area that I personally love. I love going to swap meets. Um there's a store near me. I think I think both of us uh where um we hit up that swap meet pretty much every quarter yeah. and uh it's great. I'm going to go ahead and give them a plug. Gigabytes in uh I think they're in Roswell, Georgia, is that right? Uh they're in Marietta. Excuse me, Marietta. Okay. Yeah. Um, fantastic store, huge fan of those guys. Um, if you're local to them and you somehow don't know about them, uh, now you do go and check them out. Yeah. Um, the, um, the gigabytes swap meet is, is always so much fun. Right. And so <laughs> you get like, you get that, like, you know, kind of like horse trading type vibe going on where you're like, okay, listen, I'm coming in there with, you know, a failed start of, um, uh, slaves darkness army that I really, was gung ho for I bought the start collecting I bought like this other box and a blister character I have no idea what I'm going to do with it I have no motivation for this army instead of it just sitting there let me see if I can turn it into you know bolstering for an army that I have that way I'm not out even more money and it kind of doesn't even hurt that much you know like uh, you've already you have already invested that chunk of change into the models that you're not really enjoying and so you go to the swap meet and you're taking something that you don't want and turning it into something that you hopefully are going to be happy with or something that just catches your eye and you know see you see how far you can uh you can make the deals go um yeah and you're also making the other person happy too and also you never know like when you're when you're selling like let's say i'm bulk selling my one of my armies, you know, that could be a new person that you're selling it to. And that could be a new person that we're getting into the hobby in your own area, even, and and giving them a fair price to get started. Yeah, exactly. You definitely want to, um, you know, a little bit of community love goes a long way in these types of things. You want to be gregarious with them. You don't want to, <laughs> you know, like fully exploit it out. Otherwise, you'll go to the next swap meet and people will shun you. Oh, They'll yeah. be like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. No, or, I'm, it's not that bad, but y- you know what I mean. Um, it's, 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 it's something that you, you want to remember the human on the other side of the table, right? So, um, both people coming away from the deal happy is the best way to do it. Or, you know, you could just be like, all right, there's nothing here that I want, but this guy is offering me 120 bucks for something that I, I, I don't know. Maybe I put like 150 or 200 in it, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, 120 goes into uh, a new release that's coming up in a little while. So, um, I love swap meets. I absolutely yeah. love swap meets. It's always a plethora of different things. It's a really great way to get some good deals. I've gotten truly, truly amazing deals that have probably doubled my collection for less than half the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I was at a swap meet the other, um, the other weekend, and uh, there was a guy selling Nurgle Demons, and that's what I'm interested in playing competitively. And he had a painted Rodigus, and... On my list to do by you know the time this uh, RTT happens in uh, in the end of March is paint and field Erotigus. So I literally saved myself I don't know how many hours <laughs> of busing, and I paid like maybe I don't know a little bit under half of what that kit would have cost cost me to buy new on sprue. So paint job's fantastic. Uh, I'm very happy with it, and I I shortcutted a whole boatload of work by picking that that's up. That's amazing. So, I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Hell yeah. I mean, that's the same um, with like the soul grinder specifically that I got for $40. 
That thing was oh, nice. beautifully painted. Like, let me tell you, that saved me so many hours of painting it, and it is so beautifully well done. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's wild. So definitely, if you are if you are interested in picking up a new army, or if you're interested in getting started, to to find some next level deals consider going to a swap meet and i know it's like you know there's delayed gratification there it's not instant because it's like you're not able to pose them yourself if they're built you're not able to paint them yourself if they're painted you can always repaint it but that's always kind of a, a little bit of a hassle too because then you have to prime over it or remove the primer if it's to remove the previous paint job if it's kind of thick on there all that all that stuff so sometimes you're buying a project right um but man if 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 you see something there that you really want, uh, it's it's the best feeling in the world. It is. So I highly recommend yeah, it. Yeah, sometimes you do buy into a project. Um, at a swap meet, I got two Goliath rock grinders. I got one that was in the box, and he sold it to me for $30. And then he threw in a free rock grinder just on top of what I had already bought. He said, <laughs> just take it. I don't want it. It was a bit broken up, and it was missing a couple of pieces. So, and Mm. it was not painted, it was put together, but some of the, it was pretty much broken and banged up. Um, And I managed to, you know, after a few hours of some love, I managed to put something together with the extra bits from the other kit. So yeah, sometimes you're buying into a project, but sometimes it's, it's worth it, especially for the price you're getting, um, you know, but what I, what I was also going to say was if you don't have a swap meet in your area, I would suggest do looking up Facebook Marketplace, um, Discord, like you mentioned earlier, and try connecting oh, yeah. with some people, and maybe even talking to your local game store about doing a swap meet to bring in some business for them, but also you know to get in some good deals for for you as well. Absolutely, yeah, no, um, swap meets, you know, uh, they kind of take over the table space, but it makes a, it makes a very unique vibe. So. I imagine stores will be probably pretty amenable to that. It gets people into fresh armies that they then want to play games with. They then want to like bolster it with like, well, I just got, you know, $500 worth of models for 200 bucks. I'm, I've got some like, you know, some discount in my head going. I can go ahead and pick a box or two up. Right. You know, like it, it, it's got that kind of vibe. So stores love it too. Mm-hmm. Um, eBay is another really interesting one that I've had some luck with. It's it's eBay is like feast or famine. Have you have you experienced that yourself? Yes, I have. It it can be hit or miss. Um, I know eBay usually has a flat fifteen to twenty percent off of GW stuff um, if it's brand new. Usually, yep. Um, but I think the best deal I've ever gotten from eBay was I got six warriors and ten termagants. Um, I got those fully painted for $20. <laughs> That's obscene. And it was painted oh my in my, God. in my colors, black and red, so that it was perfect. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's beyond bonkers. That's, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, eBay, eBay's great. Um, you really, you really want to pay attention to the pictures. You really want to pay attention to their, um, what do you call the it? Reviews. Uh, their, yeah, their reviews, make sure that they're not, you know, like struggling to even send out a basic package, all that stuff. But I mean, most of the time, if they're, if they're remaining on eBay, then they have some, some sense about them. So, um, I, I highly recommend it. It's, it's where people go to sell their armies once the meta shifts really hard. And we'll talk about meta chasing here in a little bit, but, um, yeah. So if, if like, you know, all of a sudden iron hands are stinkers mm-hmm. in the meta, Maybe like two weeks after the the competitive hive mind comes up with that idea, check eBay, and man, you will be able to just dive right into Iron Man. Oh yeah, you'll and, get I mean, incredible you know. deals. <laughs> just always check, like yeah. yeah, always check on that. Um, Absolutely. Uh, um, sorry. There's uh yeah yeah no uh there's um there's one other thing that I check a lot, and this is kind of specific to this store. Uh, but Warpfire miniatures, if you sort their 40k just selection by newest, you see a lot of secondhand stuff. And I think there's a few other stores that, that do stuff like that. But if they have like a, an online presence and they sell secondhand models, um, Warpfire miniatures is, is, is actually pretty dope, right? So I've got that like just bookmarked. And about once or twice a day, I'll hit it and I'll just see, you know, 
basically people trading in of various conditions, um, just all sorts of models that you would never expect to see. Like uh, one of the things that I just bought from them was um, already built and painted Chaos Warhounds for Age of Sigmar. Now, I don't play Age of Sigmar. What I do play, though, is Chaos Demons in 40k, and I want a lot of Flesh Hounds. So this is using a few different philosophies here. So I'm going to use the Chaos Demon Warhounds that are super discounted. Um, even for out of the box, they're, if you were to buy the box fresh, it is cheaper than buying Flesh Hounds. And so I'm going to paint them in a flesh houndy scheme and put them on the table. And I've already checked with the TO. He's cool with this. As long as it's like some count, some kind of corn looking hound, it doesn't matter really what it is, as long as it's on the right base size, right? So, I mean, I saved, I don't know how much, like, uh, it, it must have been like, I saved probably like 80 or 100 bucks by doing That's that. That's incredible because uh, those things are expensive. <laughs> Yeah, they're crazy expensive. They're out of stock because a bunch of other Chaos players are trying to do it. Yep. Um, so that's one of the ways that you can kind of synergize these different philosophies, right? Secondhand purchasing and proxying. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but maybe you don't want to deal with someone else's stuff. You want like what G-Dub has made on the table, ready to go with Wargaming. In which case... Um, G Dub has, and by G Dub I mean Games Workshop. I just I, I like to. I like that. <laughs> I like to no, I'm gonna start calling yeah. it G Dub now. <laughs> Hell yeah! All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, good old G Dub is going to be very happy to sell you um box deals, right? Oh my god, they always have a box deal around the corner, like at, at any one point in time. So, um, stuff like the Indominus box when Ninth Edition dropped, right? You can buy um the rules. Uh, bundled into a Necron starter army and a Space Marine starter army right now. I don't know what that's called. I think it's called Extremis. Uh, that might be the Age of Sigmar one. But, you know, um, some something like that. Uh, they have um, holiday boxes. Oh, my God, the holiday oh, boxes. Oh, I love the holiday boxes. <laughs> yeah. They're just such it's a good just, deal. They put so many models, so many different kits into there, and then they discount it, right? And so you can kind of figure out the discounts by just taking the MSRP of the box and then comparing it with the MSRP of those kits individually. Um, I, I love these things. I, I have bought plenty of them uh, of my own. My only recommendation is make sure you want every single one of those models in that box. Because typically, unless it's the holiday boxes or some other crazy deal, you're getting... One of those kits for free, essentially, is how it shakes out. So it's not really worth it if the kit that you're getting for free or one major leg of that kit is a model that you wouldn't be interested in anyway. You know, you kind of want to love the whole box. That's a good you know? point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are, how much um, How much experience do you have with the, those bundle deals? It sounds like a good bit. Um, You know, I um, with the bundle bits... Uh, uh, kits i i really haven't bought too too much into them because lately um i've just been building my armies through the swap meets um but i think the last oh, yeah. one was um there was a tyranid one a long time ago and i um i think i ended up getting it as a present to somebody who was um she really wanted to get into 40k um and she wanted to um start tyranids and of course woman of my own heart i had to go ahead and buy her <laughs> one of those bundles uh, with tyranids i think it was actually a combat box um it was the one that had a lot of gaunts in it um god oh, i can't yeah, think of yeah. it it was a, a swarm lord right yeah it had and a then... swarm lord like it had basically like the great great like starter to start this uh, to start the army i just can't remember it was from a year a couple of years ago um but i bought her that box and she was very happy with it <laughs> you're a hell of a good friend that's amazing <laughs> oh, it was a present <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's really cool um i i i go i go hog wild for these things and <laughs> like to the point to where it, it's it's kind of ridiculous so something that's fun to do is if, if it's an army box that has two different armies in it, um, you and your buddy can split. Like, say, the, the, the most recent one that comes to mind is, like, the Indominus box, right? An amazing deal on Necrons and an amazing deal on Space Marines. Yes. I could not care less 
about Necrons. I am all in on Space Marines, though. And at the time, I was hurting for Primaris because I had like almost zero Primaris stuff. And so I was talking to my buddy and I was like, hey, buddy, um, how about, or Elliot, if, if, if you guys have seen Elliot, um, on a, a recent episode of Slam Sector, uh, he and I did this. Um, you're into Necrons. How about you buy this box? We'll split, you know, half of this box, we'll split it. You take the Necrons. I'll take the Space Marines. We're very happy, right? And then I was like, wait a second. What if, uh, we each buy one of those boxes, right? And so he bought one box. I bought one box. I gave him the Necrons. He gave me the Space Marines and I doubled the contents of the box. The thing that just goes to the level of obscenity is I found another guy that wanted to do that as well. So I did the same thing with the other guy and I ended up with four copies of the Space Marine half of the Indominus box. And to this day, I'm still drowning in that friggin Indominus box content. It's, it's obscene. It's, it's, it's awful. Um, yeah. One thing that I was able to do though is, because you basically end up with like four chaplains, right? And no one in the world needs four chaplains in their Space Marine army. Right. Uh, but that that frame is great to kit bash off of, right? Mm-hmm. So I kit bashed a librarian. I kit bashed a champion. I kit bashed a uh, chaplain on bike by sacrificing one of the bike guys and just loading as many chaplain shit from the, from the uh the one that i'm chopping up into there and then i actually left one of the chaplains alone um so great great concept right so you're able to take that or you uh buy one of those boxes and then you take the stuff that you didn't want to the second hand swap meet i would encourage you to not do that because those um boxes like i was saying can be kind of expensive if you don't want exactly everything in them right Right, and you know it's funny you mentioned that because i actually did that with the tooth and claw i took the gene stealer cultists and a friend of mine took the space wolves and um, it was oh, nice. it was a yeah. great deal because we just split the price down the middle, and you're basically getting fifty percent off the box when you split it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, it's really good stuff. Um, something that I've noticed with a lot of stores is they'll just have like a flat. And I, I guess this moves on to the next topic. Um, this is uh, just straight up store discounts that certain stores have. Now, every store is going to be a little bit different. Every store is going to have different margins going on with different types of products. But uh, typically, there's going to be some way to get a little bit of a discount off of Games Workshop stuff, either through loyalty points yeah. or like hitting a certain threshold or something like that. Um, and then if you buy online, there's usually like pretty much a 15% off of GW MSRP, you know? Yes. Um, I try to avoid doing that too much just because like these stores need to, you know, exist in the community in order for the community to thrive because, uh, th- this game is no fun at all if you have no one to play against, right? right? <laughs> so, um, it's uh it's it's one of those things that like store credit um is a, is a good is a good system um I actually found uh, out through yeah. another store um if you have a lot of time on your hands like I I do sometimes mm-hmm. um you know I was drive so I had um gone to visit a relative and on the drive down it was about a 5 hour drive um I thought it'd be fun to stop at every single game store on the way down <laughs> and uh, I did, and I ended up finding a lot of really great deals on the way down from different stores. But I found out some stores, um, gee, I believe, and I might be wrong on this, but this is what one store owner told me was during the holiday time, GW allows the stores to do more than fifteen to twenty percent off of their boxes, so they can actually do really good deals during the holiday time to get rid of their boxes, and then they can restock on the new thing, newest things for the new year. Oh, damn. So That's good to know. around the time right. that I was traveling, it was um, in November, uh, the end of November. Mm-hmm. So it was around the holiday time. And um, some of some of the boxes um, that, you know, some of the kits that they had were almost 50% off. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That is, that is really cool. So a good time uh, to shop at like stores it. is during the holiday time. Absolutely. Make sure, make sure you time that. Make sure... Um, uh, quite a few stores did really good Black Friday deals where like, it was basically like, Hey, 
We're not going to tell you what this Warhammer thing is priced, but you probably want to check out this deal in store. And then you get in there and it's like a price that's so low they can't advertise, basically, you know, right. stuff like that. And yeah, and they do allow Black Friday deals. Um, I think GW also allows like really good Black Friday deals as well. Um, I think one of the big things was I got a Bellacor um, model. I think it was for around $90. Which was a really good deal from a store. <laughs> that's that's an incredible deal. Yeah. That's a that's a good find. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Um, so yeah, sometimes traveling to different stores um, and seeing what their loyal loyalty looks like. Um, sometimes during the holiday time, specifically Black Friday. Um, now that I think about it, I think it was Black Friday weekend that I traveled, and that's why I found all those good deals. Because um, <laughs> yeah, GW lets the stores be flexible around that time. Um, you know, that's another good one. Um, and yeah, just um, checking out loyalty and deals. Absolutely. So another another way that um, I got pretty deep into Warhammer quickly was the store that I was a really big fan of um, allowed me to trade in magic cards for store credit, which I then immediately turned into Warhammer. And so there's an app. Uh, that's that's made by TCG Player, right? And it's it uses your phone's camera to recognize what card it's looking at if you get the setting right, and then it gives you just a quick readout of what that card's value is. And so I had a big ass collection of Magic cards that were like 15 to seven years old, and I'm going through it with my buddies, and they're doing the same thing, and we're just on voice chat. Like basically pulling a slot machine lever and I could hear them in the background. I was like, ding, ding, ding. And then every once in a while, someone would put down one and the, and the little dinger would go like, toodle, toodle, toodle. and it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit. What did Ryan just get? $80 for whatever the hell that card is. It was a force of will. Oh God. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, you know, you roll into the store with that force of will and those other $1 rares and the store is like, okay, cool. So. Here's $150 in store credit, and you walk over that shelf, and you just feel like the biggest baller in the world. Right. It's amazing. And I think Force of Will <laughs> is more expensive now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me yeah, at all. Yeah, I think um, it actually went up, but that's really funny. Yeah. You know, that's funny, because that's how I got into Warhammer. Um, the oh, store yeah. that I was crazy about, um, they allowed me to trade in store credit for my bulk magic cards, um, really, I traded in most of my singles and a few expensive cards um, that I mm. had in my collection. I kept some of my um, EDH decks just be, just to have them, but I sold oh. all of that and I traded. I, I put it right back into War. It was like trading one addiction for the other, and I put it right back into <laughs> Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I did the exact same thing. That was. Um, I ended up with piles of Warhammer doing that because I had massive vaults of cards that just were sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. I'd already built my EDH decks the way that I liked them. They were fine-tuned, but like you go through a lot of weird cards that just aren't your play style before yeah. you actually get... And, and when we're saying EDH, um, it is, it's also called Commander. It's for a card game that you nerds have probably heard of called Magic the Gathering and uh, in my opinion it's the best way to play Magic but yeah. um, there's a lot of crossover between people playing that and people getting into Warhammer sometimes people will take a pause on one game to check out the other all that fun stuff so um, if if that sounds like a situation that you're in I highly recommend that you consider taking some cards that you know are never going to see the light of day again and basically turning them into free Warhammer kits. <laughs> yeah, or if you have bulk singles like I did, like I had boxes and boxes of just um, uncommons and rare cards. Um, oh, yeah. Those little cards added up because um, I ended up getting a lot, Just we'll just say a lot of store credit just for that. And I was able to buy out a whole, I want to say like 2,000 points, uh, 2,000 point army. And I was able to just start outright with a full army. Um, <laughs> yeah. and of course it was Tyranids. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. But, um, you know, so don't sell your, your uncommons and your rare short. If you have a huge bulk of that and you're never going to see them and they're just boxes sitting in your closet, trade those in for store credit because, um, if you trade them for store credit, you'll get more than, you'll get more money for it rather than just trading it for cash. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty great. The, uh, the, the transactions that you can do there. So 
we've been we've been coming up with a lot of deals, and all of them uh, involve um, gathering, and uh, no, no pun intended with magic gathering, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they they involve basically like putting your money down and or ch- exchanging resources and picking up more Warhammer. This is the first of a few points of advice where I'm going to say it doesn't have to always be gather the plastic. So. One of the things that I did early on was I amassed a huge pile of shame, as some people call it. It's basically a bunch of Warhammer kits that you buy. You get that instant dopamine hit of like, yeah, I own, you know, the Glotkin, the biggest Nurgle model that they make in plastic, right? And wouldn't you know it, that box literally sat in my shelves for three years across multiple moves and before I finally busted it out, I was like, this kit has been here forever. I need to do something with this. And then I put it together, and now I love the kit. Oh, my um, gosh. That's a long time. But what, <laughs> it's, 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 an, it's, it's, it's a horrible amount of time. So what I would say is something that you can do is leave the box that, you're, that you plan on buying next at the store until you're about ready to paint it, right? Mm-hmm. So... um I've, I've tried my best to reform myself, and unless it's like a deal that is time sensitive that I need to act on, I will leave it at the store. So one example is the new Demon Prince kit that I talked that, that I was talking about that just came out. It looks amazing, and I'm actively salivating over it. But I have such a painting backlog that I know right now that if I bought it, it would probably sit on the shelf for like months, if not a straight up whole year. Now that kit's not going anywhere. That Demon Prince kit is probably going to be around for, uh, I'll go ahead and make a slam sector bet. Call me out on this if I'm wrong. That kit will not be replaced for eight years. That (laughs) is going to be in Warhammer circulation for eight years before they come out with another Demon Prince kit. Um, I'm going to hold you to that. (laughs) Hell yeah. Eight years, uh, eight years comes along. And if I'm off by, if if I'm under or over, call me out on it. I'm timing it right now. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. And you viewer, if you call me out on it at a convention or at a show or at, uh, or anything, I will award you with a slam sector handshake. (laughs) Genuine guaranteed slam sector handshake from me personally. No, but uh, that kit's going to be around forever. So I might as well just go ahead and buy that when I'm ready for it, right? Leave the plastic at home, spend the money when I'm ready to paint the model is kind of my rule of thumb. Right. What about you? Do you have any uh, any um, coping mechanisms to keep yourself from diving too deep into the plastic? Well, so one of the things, and this was the first, the very first piece of advice I received when I first got into Warhammer. So the store owner of this, of this particular store where I traded all my bulk magic and went right into Warhammer, they said, pick your army. Don't go by the story. Like don't, don't, or they said, don't go by the metas. Um, I will say that outright. Do not go by the meta. Always go by what you like. So if you like sickly, disgusting like intestines and blood and guts go with nurgle if you like yeah. monstrous bugs go with tyranids you know always go <laughs> with what you like because the meta will eventually circulate back like i waited you know a long time for tyranids to have their time to shine and they did um oh they d- ever did they. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> that was wild exactly. they're probably a little overcorrected now but you know they'll come back but they'll come back <laughs> you know so so my advice is Play, get the army that you like. But the other piece of advice that he gave me was don't buy the meta. So mm-hmm. let's say you bought, let's say for me, example, I bought into Tyranids, right? And mm-hmm. let's say the meta at the time is Ultramarine. So let's say I'm going to the store and I'm like, all right, I want to get a new Tyranid bottle. I want to get an Exocrine to add to my army. I want three because I'm a jerk. And, you know, <laughs> I only have two. And then I go and I'm like, ooh, there's that box of ultramarines that's like in the meta right now. And oh my God, maybe I should just start up a new army. No, wrong. Because that box is going to sit in your collection for three years, like some people. <laughs> and you're never <laughs> going to you're never gonna end up playing it. Because when you buy that box, you're not going to have enough to build a whole army around it unless you want to drop a couple hundred dollars to buy the full army. Don't get the meta. Just get what you like. Build what you have. And just stay focused on that. 
you'll save yourself a lot of money. And then when you're done and you feel like you fully painted and fully did your army and you feel like you have money to spare, then go ahead and invest in another army. But I say stick with the one you got. It'll the meta will eventually circle back to you. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's another thing, too. Um, when I got into Warhammer, I was immediately enamored by, like, three armies. And I encourage you, I encourage anyone out there listening to this, to do your absolute best to stick to one army until you know, like, that you really love that other army. Or, you know, that, that the new, like, like, let the newness and, and everything wash over you. And just give it a second before you start buying into another army. I can't tell you how many times I picked up a bunch of stuff and I was like, you know what? Maybe I like Slanesh Demons. And I'm sitting there on a bunch of Slanesh Demons. And really what I liked was their stats output for one sneaky trick that they ended up nerfing, right? So I chased the meta on that one. I was like, oh, crap. Now I have a bunch of really weird Slanesh models that, like, I don't, I don't really like the color purple too much. Like, it's fine, but it's not like, I'm not addicted to it like I am, like a really yellow green or like a really shiny gold or something. Right. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you want to enjoy fully what you're into right so the kits that look really cool even if they don't have the best rules they've got some way for you to run that uh, uh, that that pet unit in a 2000 point game of warhammer where ideally you know that model's going to shine or you know you you practice like if you're obsessed with whirlwinds or something for space marines the whirlwind is like a really weird funky looking thing of a, of a rhino that's cool. You can absolutely find a niche strat that involves whirlwinds or stalkers or all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I recommend to follow the rule of cool before the meta, right? Right. And also, if you're playing for objectives or if you're playing smaller point games or casual, if you're playing for objectives, you have just as much of a chance as the, as like maybe the meta army, whatever that is right now. Um, I can't tell you how many times when when I was running Nidzilla for a while, uh, when that was really good, um, yeah. you know, I tabled people, but they still won because of points. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, those games feel good on both sides of the table because you're like, yeah, I didn't win, but... I pulled every single model that you put on the table off, right? It's it still activates that like core forty yeah. k enjoyment, right? Or like you know it it's a pyrrhic victory like that is always is always like a, a really good time. Oh yeah, um, not to jump on that yeah. subject, but you know whenever I table somebody <laughs> and they win points wise, I just say I won. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's and and that is that is a topic that I want to do in the future. That's like kind of like the philosophy of the win versus the loss, and like how you can kind of make it your own and everything. But that's going down a rabbit hole that is not yet fully dug out right. and uh, and everything. So I don't want the walls of that collapsing on us. <laughs> but um, yeah, the uh, the 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 thing at the end of the day is to enjoy the hobby in all of its facets, which is. Building the kits that look really cool, painting the kits and paint schemes that we think make those kits look really cool, and then putting it on the table and seeing how it goes. You can, on, in a casual game, even in smaller tournaments, take an army that is, like, according to the meta, a complete stinker, and make it work most of the time against most really powerful armies if you are a really good dedicated player and you know all the lines of that army so like admech when they were you know like six months ago from recording oh God, when they were Ad like Max. struggling <laughs> there uh, yeah there, there were there were ways to to pilot that army that if you knew all the tricks and you really like instead of army hopping you were like focused on the rules of that if you knew your outs and your strategic like uh, envelopment and like exposures and everything and, and your trades, you were you were able to pilot against most armies. Now, of course, there are going to be balance issues, so that that doesn't always apply. But um, uh, the people that do really well in this game are the ones th th that 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 I've experienced personally are the ones that focus on an army and just know it like the back of their hand. So. That's something that I've tried to begin to do as I like step back from juggling my, oh God, I think it's like five armies at this point. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a sucker. No, that's okay. I have a shameful, I think it, I think I lost count at 15. I have 15 armies. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's glorious that's glorious i yeah. i love it well hey you know tyranids like the back of your hand because i've played against them and i loved every second of it yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um yeah 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 uh, don't face i uh, don't face matt in kill team because he's very good with custodies oh thank you yeah that oh man custodies kill team was such a wild ride yeah. oh that was I hate such him. a fun time i hate him but i love him it's, <laughs> just, it was fun but oh my god <laughs> just just towering arrogance of golden banana boys just walking yeah. <laughs> with impunity if you really oh, want to budget in warhammer just get yourself some custodies because you only need like five models exactly i mean honestly that's true with some of these armies some of these armies are cheaper than others like uh knights you don't have to buy that many knights to hit 2000 points but no yeah the the uh, model itself is expensive but you only need like three of them for four or five you know you only need a few mm -hmm. yeah um that's uh actually that that's that's a pretty good like last point that i kind of want to get into uh, we've talked about a few other hobbies and in re how they compare in relation to magic, but magic, excuse me, uh, 40k itself, uh, is not too expensive relative to other hobbies. Like magic can absolutely bleed you dry, absolutely. you know? Yeah. Like the, the insidiousness of standard and those cards rotating, mm -hmm. um, becoming like, you know, um, mega hotness for a year and a half and then immediately turning into just, uh, trade junk or, is, or, it's painful. Or even cards getting banned, like, um, a long time ago, cause I was a jerk. I made a mm. Leopold deck where he makes you wheel and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I made one of those yeah. and they banned him. So I had to completely get rid of that deck and revamp it to something else. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I can't think of a single time where Games Workshop or G Dub uh, has ever banned a model. It, they'll 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 points hike it to oblivion, but you can still put that sucker on the table. So yeah. you're never going to have a feels bad moment where it's like I cannot put this guy on the table. I've always said when it comes to magic versus Warhammer, with magic, yeah, short term it's cheaper. You know, your the cards are cheaper. You feel like you're not spending as much. But long term, with all of the bands, the rotating depends on what formats you play. But also with ED, if you're playing Commander, you can keep your one deck. But eventually, like I had my my competitive EDH deck was Zer the Enchanter, and I'm now finding out he's garbage. It, there's a new, you know, like anything else, there's a new meta. So sure. long term, magic card, magic can be much more. It's much more expensive than Warhammer. So Warhammer to me is um, short term expensive. So it's expensive when you buy it outright in the beginning. But after that, once you have your army, like you said, you have your army, and that's it. Your stuff isn't going to get banned. It's not going to get rotated out. Yeah, they're going to mess with the rules for it, but you can still field your stuff, and it's not going to be complete garbage and that's one thing that i actually like with warhammer over magic is at least my stuff is still playable and it won't get banned yeah absolutely you know um <laughs> it feels good to put dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into like the same just centerpiece model as i call them like the great unclean one right, right. and know that i can put that great unclean one on, on the table for like as long as the game exists right like if I'm I'm positive Warhammer will be going on uh like 15 years from now, and I'm gonna be able to put that same great and clean one that I painted last year on the table 15 years yeah. from now. It's 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 an amazing feeling. It really so. is, just like my Hierophant. Um, that thing I took yeah. forever to we it took so long to put together and paint and do all that, and I know forever I will be able to feel that it's not gonna get banned. <laughs> yeah <laughs> hell yeah well um i think that's a that's a really good philosophical point to uh ride out of here on what do you think i think so too yeah this has been a lot of fun awesome. um thank you so much for having me yeah yeah hey thank you for coming on the podcast um so real quick uh just uh go ahead and uh plug your uh your socials that that you want people to check you out check you out on sure yeah um you can find me on twitter and uh reddit and youtube it's just all under nord queen kaya um and yeah that's it those are my plugs 
Hell yeah. All right. Well, folks, uh, that's going to do it for us here at the 5x5 podcast on Slam Sector. We've got new content coming all the time. Coming up over the next week, we've also got uh, more boarding actions in play. Uh, we've got some no dice streams happening. Usually those are kicking off on a Friday, I believe. And we've got some amazing, absolutely amazing shorts on lore being done by my boy Jordan. Uh, remember, if you enjoyed what you heard today and like this episode, subscribe. And if you want to get updated when new episodes go up, uh, check out our, so- our socials at Slam Sector on Twitter and TikTok and at dot, uh, excuse me, at Slam dot Sector on Instagram. And if you'd like to participate in the discussion, join us on Discord at discord.gg slash Slam Sector. Thanks for listening. This is Matt from Slam Sector signing off.